If you have any connection to Cantonese culture, it's likely that you will have seen Fatima Poji Muhammad and Ayasman Lumabeo on your Instagram feed. Under the moniker, Outcasts, from the 853. The two friends from Macau post short, funny skits on the social media platform and also host podcasts centered around Cantonese in growing up as third culture kids. Perhaps you've paused to watch their hilarious bad translations video where Mohammed is seen ordering dragon shrimp lobster and West broken flower broccoli or come across their meme featuring the four names for an ambulance in Cantonese. One of which is the childish sounding bibu truck. Do you have questions about the biggest topics and trends from around the world? Get the answers with SCMP Knowledge, our new platform of curated content with explainers, FAQs, analyses and infographics brought to you by our award-winning team. Humor aside, their online content is also an exploration of their diverse cultural identities. Mohammed who is half Filipino and half Sri Lankan, and Lumabeo, who is half Filipino and half Brazilian, have been friends since kindergarten. They grew up in Macau, where they learned to speak Cantonese at school, but lost touch with each other after high school. When they went to different universities, Mohammed studied at the University of Macau, Lumabeo at the Macau Polytechnic University. But they found their way back to each other in 2021 when both of them realized that they had separately moved to the US, Mohammed to Delray Beach, Florida and Lumabeo to Westchester County, New York after meeting and falling in love with their respective American partners. After the two friends met up, they found themselves able to connect and relate to each other on a different level. We both felt really homesick after coming to America and then we met up and it was like a gush of home, Lumabeo says. It felt like home, because we were childhood friends, we talked about Macau. How much we missed the food, Portuguese egg tarts, and we didn't have anyone that we could talk to about how much we missed, everything. That prompted them to have more conversations about growing up as third culture kids and their experience moving to the US and they came up with the idea of recording a podcast. It's so hard to catch up with your family on FaceTime, on your life, because it's the completely opposite time, Mohammed says. At least when we're recording what we say, it's almost like a journal for us. Plus, having made YouTube videos for fun since she was 12, Mohammed was already savvy with the technology. Within an hour or something, she came up with the logo, the page, everything, Lumabeo says. The green background in the logo, for one, is a reference to Macau's flag. The duo chose the name Outcast the Podcast. Owing to the fact they grew up as children of immigrants and as third culture kids who now live in the US. We are outcasts because we don't belong anywhere, Lumabeo says. We felt like in Macau. We don't belong, because we're half Filipino, half something else. And here, in the US, we don't belong, we feel like we're out of home, like fish out of water. The pair launched their first podcast episode in November 2021, focusing on culture shocks they faced after moving to America. As they released more episodes and started promoting their podcast, including on the Facebook group Subtle Cantonese Traits, Mohammed and Lumabeo found that their Cantonese content in particular resonated with listeners. It wasn't our intention, but it was so nice to just find our niche. Because it took us a while to figure it out, Lumabeo says. We, actually, hated the fact that we only knew Cantonese instead of Mandarin in the beginning. Because we didn't know that there are Cantonese speakers in America, Mohammed says. That wasn't in my head. My mind was so small before I left for America, I admit that. Then we realized that's the one thing that we have in common, Cantonese. 
The pair capitalized on this niche and began recording podcasts and creating funny skits on Instagram and TikTok centered on Cantonese. Creating the skits came naturally for Mohammed, having always grown up as a mischievous class clown. I crave attention because at home I don't get attention, she says jokingly. I'm also shy in some ways in actual life settings. So at least with videos, I get to edit parts that I don't want out, like when I stutter. It's crazy to find out how so many people appreciate our content so much. We named ourselves outcasts, but it's like we found our home. I Esmond Lumabeo. Some of the short videos that the duo have published include ways to tell someone to shut up in Cantonese and how to use colors as adjectives. Podcast episodes, meanwhile, focus on topics such as growing up as immigrants, Cantonese idioms and proverbs, racism in America compared to other places, and mental health among Asians. Over the past several months, Mohammed and Lumabeo have seen their Instagram page skyrocket in popularity. They now have more than 45,000 followers on the platform, with fans from the US and the UK as well as Norway, Sweden, and the Caribbean islands. And while Lumobeo used to contact other content creators for collaborations, plenty of people have now reached out to them to create videos together. They have also launched their merchandise line, featuring sweatshirts that have been embroidered with dim sum images by Lumobeo. They also sell a sweatshirt that says, Delay no more, a phrase that bears a resemblance to a certain Cantonese profanity. But though feedback on their content has been overwhelmingly positive, Mohammed and Lomobeo have also received their fair share of haters and trolls. Some point to the fact that they are not ethnically Chinese and thus shouldn't be making Cantonese content while others nitpick about what they say in their skits being factually inaccurate. We really try not to let it get to us, but I'm so sensitive Mohammed says, adding that everything they create is simply based on their own experiences. We never claim that we are educators. I just want to say a disclaimer, I am an idiot, she adds. I am a fool, the clown for you to laugh at. So literally laugh, okay. They both hope to continue growing their account and keep connecting with fans near and far over Cantonese culture on growing up as third culture kids. It can also be a bridge for people in Macau, like our friends, to see different types of culture, Lumabeo says. The pair have received messages from all sorts of fans, from second-generation Asian Americans to parents who hope to teach their kids Cantonese. It's crazy, too. Find out how so many people appreciate our content so much, Lumabeo says. This is who I'm in it for. We named ourselves outcasts, but it's like we found our home.